Now we're joined by the cardiologist who treated Ryan Miller, director of the Barnabas Health Heart Transplant Program at Newark Beth Israel Medical Center, Dr. Mark Zucker. Doctor, good of you to come on in. Uh, how many people in this country need or, or get heart transplants in a given year? Any idea? Well, the estimate is that up to 40,000 people might actually need a heart transplant. In reality, only 2,300 get a heart transplant. That's a big disconnect between those needing and those getting. What, what is it that's standing in their way? A donor gap. There are not enough donors to be able to provide the services for all of the individuals who might need a transplant. Is, is the donor gap the product of just not enough people, unfortunately, expiring, or is it because there are people expiring who just are not part of a transplant program? Forty-something percent of all Americans have actually signed their driver's license to be a potential donor. With respect to heart donors, however, not everybody is a potential candidate. Mm -hmm. Some people are older. Most of the people who die in the United States are over the age of 65 mm -hmm. or 70. And in general, we try to find donors that are in their 20s and 30s or even younger. So you're looking for a, for a young heart, uh, a strong heart that's not had a lot of the problems that we associate with, with aging these days. Correct. So basically, we're trying to find a young heart, as you point out, and that population of donors is smaller than you might think. We take a look at the pictures of Ryan now, certainly healthy and vigorous. We take a look at the pictures of him before the procedure, and he, he looked like just any other, you know, healthy kid. How do these things happen? Well, children, let me start by saying that children, teenagers, and individuals probably in their 20s tend to look very healthy despite the presence of heart disease, and you can easily be duped by that. And Ryan was one of those classic cases where he was able to perform virtually all normal activities of daily living, if not more, and nobody knew that there was a problem going on. Is there, is there something that would make one person more prone to this than others? Well, some individuals are actually predisposed to it, having had a family history of heart disease or, in his particular case, cardiomyopathy. Others are afflicted with a virus or unexpected problems that just catch them off guard. The, the uh, program that attempts to take potential donors and match them with people who need new hearts and other organs for that matter as well, how effective is it? it, it are, are, do we... Have we reached the point that we need to be in making this an effective and efficient way of delivering a vitally needed medical So the United care? Network for Organ Sharing is the national program which matches donors and recipients, and it is constantly being tweaked to improve the, to improve the odds of a match occurring. And for the most part, I would say that it's quite effective. We have the, the story that <coughs> preceded this one about this little six-year-old boy who was waiting for another heart right now had his first transplant when he was three years old. We've had stories about Dick Cheney. Uh, so, so the age gap here in terms of, of, of uh, those who could receive a heart transplant is much wider than one would have assumed a few years back. So organ donation is actually an option. I'm sorry. Organ transplantation is actually an option for neonates all the way to the probably up until the early 80s with respect to kidney transplantation. Mm -hmm. So indeed, the entire population could be a potential donor and a potential recipient. When, when people consider the whole donor issue, I, I, I'm told that some people are reticent because for fear that they might not get good end-of-life care, where their lives might not be saved, in fact. What can you tell us to reassure people about that? I can categorically reassure the public that indeed that does not happen. We're not even called in until a neurologist has already declared the individual brain dead, and we have no contact with any of those individuals before organ transplantation. Lifestyle play much of a role in the patients that you're seeing these days? I mean, the, the ones who would end up being uh, candidates for a transplant? Well, with respect to heart transplantation, mm -hmm. there are a variety of reasons why somebody might wind up a candidate. Somebody might be young, such as Ryan, and have a cardiomyopathy, which is just translated into English, weakness of the heart muscle. And somebody might be older and have had a heart attack where the heart muscle has died off. Those patients are different patients with different, popula different populations and indeed different problems, I should say. And those individuals uh, come from different points to the same spot, if you know what I'm trying to say. Absolutely. But at this point, it's just vital that everybody be prepared to offer themselves up as a donor when the time comes so that those who need can get. That, that's correct. I, I think the driver's license uh, signature is a critical component to this whole process of making sure that organs are available when organs are needed. Dr. Zucker, I have to leave it there. Thank you for coming in, sir. Thank you so much.